SpaceX will be attempting the second Starship orbital flight right this month. The company recently requested a maritime exclusion zone from the U.S. Coast Guard for rocket launching activities on August 31st of 2023. On August 31st of 2023, mariners operating offshore in waters east of Brownsville, Texas are advised of rocket launching activities and associated hazardous areas which may impact navigation interests. The USGS local notice to, maritime to mariners issued Wednesday reads, Navigational hazards from rocket launching activity may include free-falling debris and or descending vehicles or vehicle components on under various means of control. Mariners should avoid all waters within rocket flight trajectories originating from launch sites in the vicinity of Boca Chica Beach and Brownsville, Texas. More importantly, the USGS Mariner warnings went out after SpaceX submitted its final mishap investigation report from the April launch and explosion to the Federal Aviation Administration. The FAA is now reviewing a mishap investigation report submitted by SpaceX regarding the company's April test flight of its giant Starship rocket, a spokesperson for the regulatory agency said Tuesday. SpaceX soon initiated a mishap investigation overseen by the FAA, which issues launch licenses, to determine exactly what happened on April 20th and what steps to take to boost the chances of a more successful outcome in the future. SpaceX has submitted its final mishap investigation report to the FAA for review. The review is ongoing, FAA officials said in an email. When a final mishap report is approved, it will identify the corrective actions SpaceX must make, the statement added. Separately, SpaceX must modify its license to incorporate those actions before receiving authorization to launch again. This milestone holds significance as it indicates the conclusion of SpaceX's inquiry into the Starship test launch that took place on April 20th. The test was curtailed approximately four minutes after liftoff due to engine failures and additional challenges challenges encountered during the ascent phase. The next phase involves the FAA's process, a crucial step in fulfilling the agency's role as the overseeing body tasked with upholding public safety throughout commercial launch operations. On SpaceX's side, the company has conducted numerous tests on Ship 25 and Booster 9. Ship 25 has had its lifting points removed from the nose cone, which means the next time it's lifted, it will be on top of Booster 9. That booster was recently moved back to the production site following its static fire test that was meant to last 5 seconds. Instead, it only lasted 2.74 seconds, with four Raptor engines shutting down early. More notably, the hot stage ring was stacked on top of Booster 9 yesterday. That will make the fully integrated rocket slightly taller than the vehicle that flew in April. Progress with Ship 25 and Booster 9 aside, SpaceX is still completing retrofits and testing on the orbital launch mount in order to prevent the damage that was sustained during the integrated flight test in April. The water deluge system has been tested multiple times and appears to mitigate much of the energy produced by the Raptor engines. The tank farm has been repaired after being bombarded by debris during the test flight, and they are still performing tests on the Quick Disconnect system. This week, SpaceX also tested the booster Quick Disconnect many times and hood on the OLM for preparation for Booster 9's return. The large number of RQD tests since B-9 static fire could be a sign that the issue that caused four engines to shut down during the test might be related to the updates to the RQD system after the last flight. Meanwhile, the Starship QD arm was painted. Indeed, SpaceX has made remarkable progress at Starbase, but will they attempt a launch anytime soon? In fact, the FAA still needs to review the report and determine what fixes need to be completed in order to move forward with another test. The agency said it's now reviewing that report and did not provide a timeline for when its review would be complete. One of those issues will likely be the rocket's self-destruct system. 
Starship's self-destruct system, essentially a pyrotechnic charge designed to split open its fuel tanks, also took longer than anticipated to destroy the vehicle as it veered out of control high above the Gulf of Mexico. The flight termination system on the Super Heavy booster took about 40 seconds from when it was initiated until the rocket broke apart. SpaceX has conducted at least one test of a new self-destruct system, but it is unknown if that was sufficient or if more changes are needed. Additionally, SpaceX and the FAA are also being sued by environmental groups to have the five-year launch license revoked, but neither SpaceX nor the FAA have provided updates regarding that ongoing litigation. In short, while we wouldn't expect a launch by August 31st, SpaceX is closer to launching Starship again than ever. The fast-paced progress definitely can't be ignored, and a launch attempt by the end of 2023 is certainly quite possible. In other space-related news, we have rare photos showing the inside of Blue Origin's new Glen factory. Normally enshrouded in mystery, Blue Origin's new Glen factory, situated near the Kennedy Space Center boasts a comprehensive complex equipped for the production of the new Glenn rocket, with the exceptions of the BE-4 and BE-3U engines. While it's been established that manufacturing activities have been ongoing for some time, including a test booster, a new photograph has been shared, letting us have a glimpse at what Blue Origin is currently working on inside. Posted on Blue Origin's Instagram account, the image reveals various stages of production of hardware for the new Glenn rocket. The expansive factory floor is filled with tank sections in various stages of production, similar to what we see at SpaceX's Starbase facility. Dominating the right-hand side of that photograph, beneath the windows that peer into Blue Origin's Florida offices, stands a substantial assembly of tank segments. The nature of of this configuration holds an air of anticipation. Could it be an early prototype, a test booster, or, dare we hope, Light ready hardware? Regardless, the exact identity of these components, though intrinsically linked to New Glenn, remains enigmatic. A robust and reusable heavy lift rocket, New Glenn is poised to rival SpaceX's Falcon 9 and Heavy. It's undergone an extensive developmental journey, yet this odyssey has been punctuated by prolonged delays, both for the rocket itself and its propulsion system. Instances of unveiled developmental hardware from Blue Origin are as rare as they are riveting, rendering even a modest revelation like this is a gratifying event. Yet, any update that refrains from appending a delay to the rocket's launch date is a beacon of positivity. Nevertheless, the hunger for more substantive updates remains unquenched. With that all said, when will New Glenn finally launch? Speculation dances fervently around Blue Origin current state of preparedness for the New Glenn rocket's inaugural flight. A kaleidoscope of rumors paints scenarios ranging from test vehicles gracing the launch pad this summer, to a liftoff anticipated in the subsequent year, or even the cautious forecast that readiness might elude the company until 2025. These rumors, though abundant, are for now merely whispers as Blue Origin maintains a vice-like grip on its progress updates. Blue Origin has invested the past years meticulously constructing its facilities in Cape Canaveral, including a launch site seemingly primed to embrace New Glenn. However, the creation of flight-ready hardware seems to be an intricate endeavor at present. A feature in the Wall Street Journal underlines Blue Origin's steadfast commitment to a 2024 launch for New Glenn, or ideally an expedited timeline. Bob Smith, the CEO, affirmed to the journal, the aspiration is for New Glenn to take flight at the earliest viable moment. Everyone shares that aspiration. We won't rush at 
at the expense of precision. New Glenn has been earmarked to propel lunar landers for Artemis V and beyond, with in-space testing of these landers possibly initiated as soon as the coming year. Delays in these tests would reverberate into the readiness of the Blue Moon lander for NASA. Staying faithful to the next year timeline assumes paramount importance not only for Blue Origin, but also for NASA's aspirations. And that's all folks! If you want to support our channel and get access to exclusive content, please consider becoming a patron by clicking the link in the description below. We appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.